Staying Alive UK. Share your story. Hi, Sam. How are you today? Hey, brother. Good to be here. Uh, well, thanks for letting me on the show. It's, um, I, I'm excited. Oh, great. Well, I'm really excited because your, your subject matter, I'm hoping to learn a lot from you today um, because you've got a very special subject, which I don't know a huge amount about. I know the topic, but obviously I want to hear from you about that. So let's get started. Let's get into it. I'm going to ask my first question, which is how, why don't you tell us your story about how you got to where you are today? All right. Well, since it's a story, let's tell them a little bit of a story format for fun. So once upon a time and born in July 2022, there was a boy in the land of Owensburg, Indiana named Sam Mitchell. He was born at Bloomington Hospital. At four years old, he was diagnosed with autism, high, very high functioning. And throughout his life, he dealt with a lot of exclusion and negativity that made him almost snap at 16 years old because the bear finally roared. Well, at 16 years old, he had enough. He was over it. He just was just fed up and he decided to make some change changes, whether they were good, bad, good or bad changes. That was something we had to work on, but we decided to go for the good changes because at the end of the day, I'd rather be nicer than meaner. That's just my personality. So I guess at 16 years old, I decided that I was going to try and make some friends and not give a crap of what others thought of him, himself. And it worked. He made great friends. He is living a better life than he once did upon a time. But he's, but the real journey begins at a Riley dance marathon. And he found cameras and found some wonderful people. And they asked him what it was. And he said, join media club next year. I was like, all right. And I did. That's where I found the podcasting or where the boy found the podcasting. And it just clicked with him. But he knew he couldn't be a senior in high school for the other. So the only way he figured out that he would be able to continue his skills was to start his own podcast. And that was Autism Rocks and Rolls. Wow. And how old are you now? Sam? I'm 19. I was um, 16 when I started it. When I started my podcast journey, I think I started my podcast at 17. Great. Great. And yeah, why... that's right. Yep. Yeah. So... I like the title, Autism Rocks and Rolls. And how did you come up with that? Well, we were in, well, I'm a big fan of rock music like ACDC, Nirvana, Elvis, Presley. So we decided to go down the hobbies. Well, we figured autism was a good starter because I was going to use this. I want to use this platform to do some, do some good in the world. I've always wanted to do something good in the world, but never really had the opportunity. I think going to, I guess, Riley Dance Marathons, but... Um, I guess I use this for good. So we figured autism because there's a lot of people who need that. But rocks and rolls came from the love of rock music. We tried rock and roll, taken, rocks and roll, taken, rock and rolls, taken. But there was none with the S's. So we just added the S's and it worked out pretty well. Oh, brilliant. And what, what are you hoping to achieve with the podcast? Well, I'm hoping to achieve that um, this becomes my future. I mean, I always joke around and say, ask me in five years and we'll talk in for the future because in all sincerity, I really don't know. I like to take this one day at a time, but I'm hoping that this will become my job. Great. And what, but, but apart from it becoming your job, you want to get the message about autism out as well, don't you? Right. So tell us a little bit about that. What's the message you want to get across to people? Well, it's the mission, actually. It's right here. The mission of Autism Rocks and Rolls is to take the negative stigma off of autism and other conditions that may think of disabilities. People on the spectrum are not broken and do not need to be fixed. Those who have conditions or abilities are not to be pitied. There's nothing to be sorry about. Okay. So you're going to have to do that again for me, but just a little bit slower. Okay. Yeah. The mission of Autism Rocks and Rolls is to take the negative stigma off of autism and other conditions that may think of disabilities. People on the spectrum are not broken and do not need to be fixed. Those who have conditions or abilities do not have to be pitied. There's nothing to be sorry about. Wow. Did you write that? Um, we had a kind of a mission statement. I helped out, like, get the ideas, but my mom's an English teacher, so she wrote it out where it made sense. 
Oh, brilliant. Well, that's good that you got your mom involved. Excellent. Okay. So that's a great mission statement. And so for the podcast, are you what kind of guests are you interviewing in order to help with that? Well, to be honest with you, I didn't want to just do autism because I feel like that'd be kind of selfish. So I decided right. to do anyone with a story. So I've had some guests with autism. I've had Anthony Yanni, a basketball player with autism. Uh, I had NASCAR drivers with autism. But my biggest two guests I had were Temple Grandin, the, probably the biggest autistic advocate out there who is in the agricultural world. She's phenomenal. You need to look her up if you haven't heard of her. And famous pro wrestler Mick Foley on the show, who has a son the spectrum. And he was pretty good. He's a pretty good guy. But I've had, like I said, others. I actually one time um, had an ex, ex-convict. Wow. Wow. Who has changed his life for the better. That sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. So you you mentioned the word spectrum a few times. And so for the listeners who are not familiar with autism, can you explain a little bit about what that means? Sure. So autism spectrum, I there's two definitions. I have mine and society's. Society's view is a neurodevelopmental conditional disorder where they don't pick up on certain aspects of life, such as cooking, cleaning, and driving. My definition is just a different way of thinking, but different than what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are people out there that says every, everyone walking on the planet has some sort of autism. It just depends where they are on the spectrum. Do you, do you agree with that? Yeah, I, but we believe that everyone in the world has talent from the low functioning to the high functioning to those who not are on the spectrum to those who do have autism are in my situation so what do you mean with low and high functioning so you- there yeah i can go into that for you so there are different spectrums like the functioning level so there's low functioning which means they are basically uh they're 20 years old biologically but in the mindset they're three you right. have middle which means that they're 18, but they have the mindset of an eight-year-old or a 10-year-old. Me, on the end, I'm a high functioning, which I can do this and all that jazz, but I might be high a little bit. So instead of me being 19, I think I have the mind of a 17, 18-year-old. Right, right. Got you. And some also don't aren't uh, speaking. That's another thing too. Even, But I also believe that if you're not speaking, it doesn't mean you're worthless. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Okay. So thank you for that explanation. That just kind of, yeah, helps me and hopefully will help the listeners as well to get the head around it. And how, how many podcasts have you done so far? Um, or well, I, let me do the math here for a second. I think over, over 60. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think 69 or on, 69 or 70. I'll have to look that look look at look Whoa. at that look that up again. That's a lot. That's 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 a massive amount. And what about all the production? Do you do that yourself? Uh, the editing and all that, yes. That is hundred percent me. I actually like that. I know some people hate it. But I do because I love it. I've offered podcast editing services through a nonprofit that I do. So, oh, tell us about your nonprofit. All right. So, through the nonprofit, it kind of started after I got sponsorships and I was able, I developed some really great uh, relationship, business relationships with them. I've had Wellspring Pain Solutions hop up aboard the train. I've had CPA Tax Service hop aboard the train. I've had Rudra Recommends in Ohio hop aboard the train. JDS Creative Academy hop aboard the train. So they're just supporting my um, mission. But I also have a board of five. And I got to help out with like disability events like CAS for Kids, helped out with like local wrestling shows, may able to do that. But then I also services like podcast coaching, podcast editing, ad space, sponsorship, collaborative work, whatever that entails. We'll have to discuss that. If someone's interested but i also am a motivational speaker i've spoken in oklahoma um orlando and canada wow (laughs) that's great and 
when you say you've got sponsorship, you you've actually got sponsorship for your podcast. Yes, sir. That's amazing. And do you have a big listening base? How many listeners do you know? Uh, I don't know about listeners, but I do know 10K downloads. So I would okay. assume there's a lot of daily listeners in there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, the fact that people are downloading it means that, yeah, quite a few of them are going to be listening to it, right? Even if they just listen for five minutes, they're still a listener. Yeah, exactly. So what else can you tell me about the podcast thing, your podcast, where you're going with it? Um, well, let me think here. I do have um, upcoming events. So I know that next month I also have a virtual speaker. So I've spoken, I'm going to speak virtually at a summit and at a virtual conference the next month. The first one's in August, the next one's in September. And what, what sort of things would you be talking about then when you're well, doing your... There, it's a variety. Uh, special education is one of them. One time I just told my story a couple times. So that's one thing I do. But then one time, and the Canada one was called ASET, Assistive Special Education Technology. It was about how technology can sometimes be the answer for the spectrum. And I have my own views on that. And I think it's both and both not. But I kind of supported the both side on that. So that definitely was an interesting one. But through this one, uh, I think the next one will be about my story in an analogy form. And then the September one will be about resources. Okay. So tell us about the, a little bit about the, your story in the analogy form. What, what's that about? Well, I mean, a lot of people have to spec on that uh, summit. We're going to do speaking their story. I didn't want to just do that. I feel that'd be kind of boring. So I wanted to make it into analogy form. I, I don't know the analogy. I don't know what I'm going to compare it to quite yet. I'm still oh, kind of okay. wrapping my head around that. Right. But we'll be doing it to something. Okay, great. Well, you're certainly a busy man trying to do all of these things and juggling all of those different things. Yeah. That's, Stop, that's top incredible. Top school on that too. I'm in college right now. I'm in Ivy Tech and I'm, I think I'm going to shoot my math class, I think, after I'm done with this. Right. <laughs> so you're at college right now, did you say? Yeah. Yeah. So what are you studying? Um, general business administration for now, but I'm hoping to transfer to Vincennes uh, next year for either media or entrepreneurship. Right. Great. Well, they, they seem to, I mean, all of them seem to be in the right direction for where you're going, correct? I think so. Yeah, absolutely. So what else, Sam? What else would you like to share? Well, what else I could share about you is right now we're redecorating the studio. We're trying to revamp it a little bit. I have a Facebook page, Autism Sam Stories. You're more than welcome to check out. I have a website, autismrocksandrolls.com. That is everything I've done and do and did. So I would say feel free to check that out, see what I'm all about. And to hear an episode, of that would definitely be something to do for me. I'd really appreciate that. Even if you're not autistic, it would just, just taking time for it would be really appreciated. Yeah. Well, that's what, you know, definitely we'll ask the listeners to, to do that. And we'll include all of those details in the show notes for sure. But what, how, how often do you record interviews then? And do you have like a bank of people lined up for the future? Yep. I have a full queue of people that sometimes will maybe be in another season. They'll be in with someone else. Like I said, I, I got to do what I can do to make others happy, but do my best to do that. Right. So, so if someone wanted to get on your podcast, you know, how do you they do talk. that? You would contact don't... me. You can schedule Calendly with me or email me at info at autism, rocks and rolls.com. And we'll talk. Okay, so you talk for, so this, you don't have like an online calendar where people book on? I have an online calendar. It's, it's the Calendly that you yeah. can book for to uh, talk to me, for to chat with me. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But they can't book to go on the podcast on that. They have to talk to you for a chat first. Is that yes, it? They have to they have to chat and then we discuss the details. Ah, got you. So then you schedule something. Yep, 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 yep. 
So if someone contact, contact you, contacted you today, how far in the future would they be able to get an interview with you? Um, well, we'd Roughly. have to, well, around, I guess I have a full queue and stuff pops up. So, but if you're like, like, I want you on, we'll put you on. Let's put it that way. Okay. That's great. Well, that's fair enough. And how many recordings do you do? Uh, every 13 days. So count from the last published day, which was, I think, like June 29th. Count from right. count June 29th and 13 days from there, boom, that's your next uh, published day. So what's magical about the number 13 and the 13 well, days? It keeps it fresh and it doesn't rot out because I learned with podcasting, it's like cheese almost, almost. You got to keep it fresh where you want to eat it, but not eat too much of it. Otherwise, the taste gets stale. Also, you don't want to wait too long because it gets stale. Right. That's really interesting. I like that. I like that analogy. And so you think the 13 days is like the magical number? Apparently so. I thought it was 16, but because we got so much sponsors on a season, we decided to do 13 and... I didn't think it was going to work. I thought, well, crap, I'm going to, it's going to rot out again. I was wrong. I'll admit it. I was a hundred percent wrong. 13 is the magic number. I think. Wow. I think, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think 10, your 10 to 15 is the magic number actually. Oh, okay. Great. A, ra- a range, a range of there. I can't give you an exact number. I mean, it's different for everybody else, but that's your magic range right there. Got it. Got it. That sounds interesting. I mean, I publish mine, you know, every week, every seven days or so. Um, so that's definitely not in the magic, in the magic yeah, number. Not the magic. I don't know. I mean, are you keep, let me ask you, you're keeping, maybe you're keeping good. I mean, it, de- it depends on the people and the topic and everything else. So yeah, it could work. It could not. I mean, I don't know. You're I'm not going to go in your stats and, I'm like, hey, go do this. You know, I'm not going to no. do that. I ain't going to do that to you. But if it's working, then it's working. It's just, it wouldn't work for me. I'd be like, well, uh, well, I just lost one. Shoot. Plus with my college life, I kind of balances it out with my life right now. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds sensible. Definitely. you got other things to do, haven't you? And, um, but I, I, what, what do you do in terms of getting ad, those people that sponsor you do you record the ads or does somebody else put the ads that in is a, that is actually up to them. that's a great question i can answer that for you so we have different slots so there's like a section of podcasts where it's paid for the following and then be like here's a paid for the following yada 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 we talk about you for 15 seconds if you want more though we have 30 seconds so we can go that and put that in the podcast or a minute Right. And then there's definitely, we also have a gala. Sometimes you'll get accessories with our gala that we host every April. We're doing our right. second one in April. So we'll see how it goes. And but so you it, have a different... It's all different. And we, and making the ads, it's depends. We have, we know someone who has a great voice and will make it for us. And boom, there you are. Or I make it myself, self, or they can do it. We haven't had anyone do it yet, but we've had, some do the others. It's a variety. It depends on what you want. So you have a different rate for the different length of time. Yeah. yeah, for the ads. And it depends on how you want it done. Whatever you want done, we do it. You just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Yeah. And so they pay you direct or? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that de- depends on where you are. If you're in Oklahoma, I usually get it mailed. But if you're in Indiana, yeah. Right. Okay. And um, how often do they want ads on every episode or? Um, that is, a, that's up to you. I have an editor for that reason. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I couldn't do that. She's not here today. She had wanted to go see some friends, but she is the person who works that out. Right. But we, but we have a chart that helps it out too. We have a bronze package, which is a hundred or something, but then we also have an ultimate package, which is two thousand or more. Right. Okay. Cool. Wow, that sounds amazing. I mean, 
it, it takes a lot to to work with all of those kind of things. And did you go out to search for those sponsors or did they come to you? Well, it depends on which one you're talking about. So lots of them have happened. One happened through a networking event. The, the, the very first ones reached out to me through certain, just through how it happened. But there are some that I'll reach out to. For example, I did, so what I call a sponsorship field trip days was where we go around and said, hey, here's the deal. What do you think? And we went to a Blue Boy chocolate shop and they were interested in they ended up doing it. Then we also had a, um, we went to Mitchell, Indiana and found a flower shop and the lady was very interested in doing it and it happened. Great. All you had to do was ask and I know lots of it will be no's, but there may be that one yes. Yeah, fantastic. That's, that's good. So, so how long have you got to go at college? Uh, I go to I do virtual classes because I can't follow along in uh, in person classes, so I do virtual. Okay. And that's much better for lots, lots better for me. Yes, but I go nowadays every Thursday. I, I'm on summer break, sort of. I'm taking a oh, summer yeah. class just so I can do the math to get it over with. Because Sam doesn't do math well at all. <laughs> okay, join the club. That's the same here. And how, how long have you got left then? How many do you got to do another year, two years? I have three years left. Three years left. Okay, so then imagine you're at the end of the three years. You, you know, you graduate. And then what do you think will happen next in terms of you doing your business? I mean, this go back to a hobby, go back to being a business, talk to me after I graduate and we'll, and we'll see where it is. <laughs> okay, that's a good answer. I, th I thought you might have a bit of a vision in terms of what you would like it to be. I mean, yeah. okay, I can go into that. The vision is this is what I do for a living. This is what I do. This is what I do. Maybe one day we'll talk about it on talk shows. I mean, like I said, man, it's, it's a variety. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. So what, what else have we not talked about you would like to share? Well, let me think. Oh, duh. I didn't thought of that. I've done a TED Talk called Sold Structure. Wow. I had to do it virtually through COVID, but it's still like considered a TED Talk, which is phenomenal. It's called Sold Structure. It's why autistic people need structure in their life. And structure has helped me throughout my livelihood because I got to know what to expect and knowing what to expect is so much better than knowing not what to expect for me. So that's what I talked about. Wow. How long was your talk for? Uh, I think like 30 minutes or something. I, I can't 13, remember that. 13, one, three or 30, three, zero. Oh, three, zero. Okay. Is the, is the video on YouTube? Uh, yes. It's on my website too. It's on your website. Okay. Well, I'll grab it from there and I'll include it in the post. Yeah. So people can watch that. Thank, thank you. And then we also have our gala coming up in April. We can't give you the date yet because it's kind of still early in the stages. But yeah. I can tell you we'll be in April. It'll probably be in Bloomington somewhere. Like I said, I don't know a venue. It's just kind of starting up. But we'll see what we can do with that. I'm hoping you'd be hoping that others would be, uh, that listeners be interested in attending. Right, great. And what, what will happen at the gala? Uh, the gal well, what's going to happen is we have um, food. Um, last year, we did a silent auction, so I don't know if we'll right. do it again. We'll have a booth. We'll probably have a speaker, knowing ourselves. But we, again, we don't know who. Like I said, this is just in the planning stages, man. But what's the purpose of the gala? What, to make well, people aware of autism? or? Well, it, we each year has a different theme, so we're not sure on yet, but I'll tell you last year's theme. It was called How Do We Get There and Success for All. It was a, that one was the theme of that was success and how and how someone can redefine success because to me, getting the mail and riding a limo equals each other out. So say so that last bit again. Getting the mail and riding a limo equals each other out. They're both right. equally successful. And some may not agree with that. 
Gaining the what? The mail. Gain the mail. Yep. Gain and the mail. I'm, what do, what does that mean? Excuse my ignorance. What does gain the mail mean? Like going to the mail, like getting the mail, like going oh, to the mail. Oh, okay. And got you. Oh, got, got your mail. Yay. Yay. And riding a limo cancel each other out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've never heard that before. It's, it sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. And so so you were talking about success in the previous gala and the theme will be different for next year yeah we we don't know it but we'll definitely we'll probably figure it out for sure we we I'm always sure have we yeah of course okay what else have we not covered yet well let's, i'm trying to think of what else for you feel free to check out my website i've also been on uh, many other podcasts this one including but there's a lot of um podcasts i've been on previously you're gonna feel free more to check out those episodes and so, they're all on your website too yep and then i'm helping out i mean i've always like said collaborative work i mean i'm very open to that i'm very very open to collaborate with some which means i'm really to write with you i'm an educational writer i have a blog out so that's definitely something that's on my website too great so where's this kind of entrepreneurial mindset come from? Who's inspired you to do all the things that you're doing? Because you're doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> Myself, because like I said, it turned into a business very unexpectedly. It was initially to be a hobby, but after we got sponsors, that's when it went from $70 to over a thousand. Right. Which I, I don't mean, make my money on just sponsors. I make my money as other ways. The gala, we raise a lot of money. I can tell you that. Hmm. I mean, the thing is, you're only 19, right? So, yep. so is it your mom, your dad, your uncle who's inspired you to do uh, this? Or family, lots and lots of family members who just have are my support system, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Oh, that's lovely to hear. That's great. But is your is your family in business as well? Uh. Not really. My mother, we're all self-taught. My mother is actually a teacher. She, she, she teaches eighth grade English. Right. And my father is an electrician. So we're a complete opposite ends on the business side. But on retrospect, my father does run a little hay farm. So yeah, if we want to get, if you need to get hay for your animals, feel free. <laughs> That's brilliant. Okay, so, so there's a little bit of a, certainly on your father's side there's some business there mindset that may have you may have inherited for you to be a little bit entrepreneurial in what you're doing well very entrepreneurial i should say maybe probably it is a little bit in me but as i said earlier it kind of spilled out and happened unexpectedly well that's really lovely that's really lovely so what else sam have we do we need to talk about I'm trying, that's all I can think of, but that it was great being here. And if you ever want to contact me, if the listeners ever want to contact me, you can find me on my email info at autism rocks and rolls, or you can even give me a call at 812-797-9045. Brilliant. No, thank you now, for sharing. You, though, I don't do voicemails. I hate voicemails. I understand them. They're, they're dumb. So I, if you leave a voicemail, I'm warning you right now, I probably won't check it. <laughs> no good stuff well the best thing is for people to get on your website and contact you that way i think yeah um so we'll include all of those details in the show notes and i i really want to wish you a huge amount of success in everything that you're doing you're doing a great job there and success with your college and i hope you you will succeed in your maths and all the business studies that you're doing and um, please keep in touch. I'd love to know how it all goes. Thank you for the information and the share and your story. Um, yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Sam. Of course. Thank you for letting me be here. All the best and take care. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please rate, subscribe and share at will. I'm always looking for more listeners and guests. So do get in touch, please. 
you can find me pretty easily by searching for Staying Alive UK. Thank you. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.